And finally tonight, a story about endings, the end of a train and the end of an era. Here's ABC's Brian Rooney. Moving BN 3506. D.C. Hunt rides a caboose for the Burlington Northern Railroad out of Bend, Oregon. Uh, I made some cornbread this morning. Uh, and a couple of homemade uh, tamales. He leaves his lunch to warm on the stove as he starts his day as the lookout at the end of the train. After a while of working back here, you can hear the slightest bit of movement in the slack coming in. You always try to get yourself ready for it. Rattling along at the end of a mile of freight cars, for more than a hundred years, the caboose has carried the conductors and a good deal of the romance and mystique of railroading. It looked pretty comfortable in the old days, as conductors made a home for themselves traveling across the country. But being in the caboose was loud and dangerous as the train lurched between stops and starts. You uh, keep an eye on the track behind, you keep an eye on the track ahead. Uh, you just make sure that it's, everything's done safely and uh, nobody's going to get hurt, and you get your work done. The thousands of cabooses that once trailed at the end of freight trains all over America have been left on a siding or placed in a museum or used as theme locations for offices and restaurants. They've been replaced by this, a 50-pound box called a rear-end device, which checks brake pressure and picks up signals from track sensors to tell the engineer how the train is running. It doesn't watch the Great Plains or tell tales of travel. It's just an electronic box. And that'll do BN 3506. As his train picks up cars along a local route, Hunt gets on and off, throws an occasional switch, and stays in touch with the engineer. Moving over. I like my little cab. <laughs> I like the hell out of it. But DC Hunt is one of the last conductors who will ever have this job. It's the end of the line for the caboose. Brian Rooney, ABC News, Bend, Oregon.